Good evening. My name is Molly Sheehan. I am the project manager for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles Office of Life, Justice, and Peace. And we are um, presenting Care and Prepare to many of the parishes throughout the Archdiocese, but uh, I have to say, y'all are the furthest one up that we've been able to do, so I'm happy that uh, we are able to bring this here and happy to see all of you here tonight. So I just wanted to introduce Care and Prepare. It is a program that we've created uh, as we were fighting assisted suicide last year. As many of you know, it uh, passed here in California in the legislature and was signed into law and went into effect June 1st. And so um, just that was through that fight, we, we had a, a lot of great conversations with people, um, a lot of great activation in the parishes, but also we talked with a lot of people who, who uh, along with being concerned about assisted suicide, wanted to learn more about finding good end-of-life care. And as Catholics, this is something that we have been in the business in for a very long time. Uh, it's something that our, our church has really taken on, and we see that in the great Catholic health care that we have in our hospitals and, and in the care that we have for um, the elderly and for, for just from the beginning of life to the end of life, we, we see that Catholics really understand that. And we also um, have hope in the resurrection, and so that uh, fuels so much of what we believe uh, at the end of life. And so um, we, we wanted to be able to present to people the, the goodness of uh, that, that care. Um, we wanted to present what the church teaches at the end of life uh, so that people are, are not afraid, but also to present what, what good care looks like. And um, so we worked with Providence Hospital in the Los Angeles area to create this program. Um, and it really is a beautiful thing. So we're going to start off by talking a little bit about the, the theology, just very basics, and what the church teaches on the end of life. Uh, then we'll go into um, talking about uh, end of life healthcare and, and basically how to, you know, very practical things, including advanced directives um, and that kind of thing. And then we're going to close. We have a chaplain coming from St. Joseph's Hospital in Oxnard, and he's going to talk um, just about, just share some stories about his experience with pastoral care at the end of life. So uh, I think we have a great program, and I'd like to introduce Father Mike um, from La Parisima, just up the road here. I'm going to be talking about the uh, church teaching on end of life. Thank you, Molly. I think it was um, providential that we meet today because as um, some of us I went to Mass this morning, our reading and our gospel really tied together with what we're talking about today. Uh, our gospel was um, an incident where Jesus is coming into a town and the mother um, lost her only son, which was really a devastating effect for anybody. But, the, but that son represented her care. And the gospel records for us how Jesus had great care and compassion for not only the son who died, but for the mother that was left behind without anybody to care for them. And so we can find different episodes in the gospel. Lazarus, Martha, and Mary is a prime example of Jesus continuing to care for um, all people, from those that are sick, and there's countless episodes of that in the Gospel, and even today for the young man who died, and Jesus brings him back. And I think as we look at our Gospels, we look at God's revelation to us, it is a source of where all our theology comes from. And so I start with that because not only does it tie into what we celebrate today in liturgy at the Mass, but it's the source and summit of our faith. It's, it is from what we gather all our theology, what Jesus proclaims in the Gospel. And so, whatever we talk about today, uh, we'll always find its source in God's revelation to us from the Old Testament and to bring to completion in um, uh, the New Testament. As I recall back to my own theology um, classes many, many years ago, when I was uh, younger and had more hair, my Lucy <laughs> and tell me. Um, one of the phrases I remember from our moral theology class in, in medical ethics was um, care and cure. But care was principle, because 
we might not be able to cure every disease. And we might not be able to bring people back to the health that they once um, had. But care can be exhibited, shared, provided for, regardless of the quality of life that one is able to enjoy. And so I think what we find in the Gospels today with Lazarus and with uh, Mary and that whole incident, Martha, with the young man in the Gospel today, Jesus always cared for those individuals. And so that has to be the primary um, uh, mode of operation for us, to care for one another. And so all our theology of um, the dying and, and caring for those and preparing for that end of life has to find its foundation in Scripture. And what we find in the example and the words of Jesus, how he cared for each individual. And so when we talk about the end of life issues, um, that has to be paramount. How do we care for those that are sick? How do we care for those that are terminally sick? And what do we need to do in order to um, promote life but also to respect the end point. And another aspect of that's important in theology is, is to recognize what Jesus says almost every time he cares for someone. And he has one of those great miracles. It's always to show the glory of God. He always helps us to recognize that whatever he's going to do here, it's always to show the power of God happening in that community. He cares, but he also points us to something beyond. And I think as we think about um, the political side that's, that's occurring in our nation today, that's the part that we forget. Not we, they. That's the part that's forgotten. That we think this is the end and be all of everything. And really our life here, as we know of people of faith, is to say, we're getting ready for the more important life afterwards. How do we care for those that are sick and, and, and give them the respect and dignity that they deserve? But also how do we prepare them for the next life? And that's a difficult challenge um, for some individuals in our society because they don't see that there is a next life. That there is a purpose for our existence. To give glory to God through the life we live in anticipation for the life that we will live forever, for all eternity. And so there needs to be, um, along with caring and preparing for the end of life, um, another important word I think that's, that has to be paramount to our understanding of these issues is reasonableness. Some will, will say, well, we can care for someone and we'll, um, but how far do we have to care? What's extreme and what's ordinary? And I think an important word to keep in mind there, and I always try to keep certain words in mind because it helps me to understand the whole essence behind that way of thinking is, and the word is reasonable. What's reasonable? So I'll give you an example. Um, a child at school is playing in the yard and falls down and hurts their knee. What's reasonable? To clean it off and give a band-aid. Okay. So that has to be one of those important words that we can keep in mind. Um, years ago, my dad um, was suffering from cancer for many years, and at the end of life, he was at home, he died at home. Um, and that's how he wanted him, how my mom wanted it. But what was reasonable is that he was comfortable in those last stages. He had done, and the doctors had done everything possible, but he also recognized that everything they could do would never restore him to the life that he had before. But he had the faith in God to say, I allow the doctors to do what they can, what's reasonable, and then he realized at a certain point that the treatment wasn't going to do any more help. And so instead of prolonging what was inevitable, it wasn't reasonable anymore. 
but he continues to recognize the importance of faith he shared with my brothers and myself and my mom through the example, through the witness. And I think that's an important word. It's an important word for me as I can uh, think about these issues, to care and to prepare, but also to understand what is reasonable in each action. And so what are the things that are reasonable? Hydration, nutrition, as long as someone's able to take in that, um, that hydration and nutrition for themselves and it's not a discomfort for them, that's reasonable. At the end of my dad's life, um, it wasn't reasonable for him to continue to eat. It, it hurt too much. There was a lot of discomfort. But with the morphine that he was given, he was, we cared for him and he was comfortable in that last stage. And so I think hopefully these examples help to illustrate what the church teaches that it doesn't have to be the morbid kind of picture that society puts out there. But really God gives us so many beautiful ways in which to care, to prepare, and to be reasonable in our action with others in this last day. It's a very difficult situation. And some of you that have experienced it know. Um, talking to my brothers and my mom, it was difficult for us, especially for my mom, who was married almost 45 years to him, missed it by a month. Um, but the faith is what allowed her to continue on. You know, the caring community that was there with her through the church. Um, but also my dad saying, it's no longer reasonable to maintain this. Because the inevitable is coming. And so, um, we care for him in, in, uh, in home. We care for him through uh, our presence. But also the doctors did all they could to care for them. And I think that was such an important part of our understanding of our faith. That um, my dad taught to us, um, his sons, and, and my mom taught through um, their example as husband and wife that um, caring was an important part, but also preparing, saying, this, the end is here. But as we know, and as Martha and Mary helps us understand in the Gospel of Lazarus, that Martha proclaims that Jesus is a resurrection. And that's why we're not people that say, well, the end, and that's all. But the end leads to a beginning. That's why I kind of bring it back to the gospel. The gospel has and is the way that the Lord teaches us and helps us understand this, these issues. Okay? They're difficult, and in that gospel passage of Martha, Lazarus, and Mary, Jesus is, weeps. He's sad for his friend. There is an emotion, a human emotion, that Jesus shares with us but he also cares for Martha and Mary at that particular time. But he also helps us to recognize that this is leading to something greater. And I think as people of faith, as Catholics and, and other people of faith, we understand that. We understand what the Lord is telling us and sharing with us through his example. And I think it's important for us to give witness to that, to help people prepare, that it's not a scary thing, that God is walking with us all the time. He's never left us behind. And we have countless scripture passages that help us understand that. And I think that's the important part. That it's important to start with that, because it's, it's the point in which we journey. If we don't have a good starting point, we'll never have a good ending point. We had another um, professor at, at uh, seminary who would say, begin the way you need to continue. If you don't begin right, you're never going to end right. Mm -hmm. um, try it out on the road, um, trying to get somewhere. If you don't start right, and you're going south on the 101, and you're trying to get to San Luis Obispo, you'll never land up there. Okay? <laughs> um, or it will be a very long trip. <laughs> so I, there are... Uh, these issues can get kind of complicated in particular situations, 
but I think it's important to keep in just a, a few important words that help us in our reflection. First of all, always look at the gospel. What does Jesus teach us and share with us in his example and in his word? The second one is he was always caring to those individuals. He always helped and prepared for the next life, always pointing to the purpose of our existence. And then to always help us to recognize what's reasonable in each situation. And I'll give you a few examples of that. What do we need to do in order to respect the dignity of every human being, but also to understand that at some point we need to prepare ourselves for what God has prepared for us, eternal life. And I think those few little words with the examples of the scriptures I think will help us in this very difficult situation. And especially if you're in the middle of it and you're walking with someone in their end of life issues, situations. Um, to be that compassion of God that, that Jesus was. And we need to be that light of the world to share with others who are in the midst of darkness that Jesus is that light. He helps us in that journey. And he helps us to recognize um, the goodness that God shares with each one of us. And so we need to advocate for that. We need to be people who um, promote that in our word and example. We need to be people who um, give that um, hope to other individuals um, in, these, uh, in this situation. And so hopefully those are some um, uh, short thoughts but um, hopefully there are illuminating thoughts that um, we can branch out from. That that is the kernel of our faith, the source of our faith, and from that we get to expand it, say how does it work in application? And I think as this evening goes along, and as we hear um, um, from the different presenters, we can see how Jesus in the Gospel, and the stories that he shared with us, and the miracles that are exhibited for us will help us expand and live out what we practice each and every day. Hopefully those stories and that gospel that Jesus has shared with us today about the young man and his mother, that that is a story for us to recognize that God is compassionate and he asks us to share that compassion with one another. Thank you for the nice for doing that.